Hello guys, in today's video we're going to be discussing the repetition effort method. So as previously discussed in the other videos, the max effort, the max effort and dynamic effort method, the repetition effort method is also a method of strength training put forward by the Russian researcher Verkashansky. So the repetition effort method basically is using a sub-maximal weight, but you're going to failure. Right, going to failure or near to failure elicits maximum motor recruitment in another way. So you see the other two methods have maximum motor recruitment in different ways. So the max effort is by going to a one rep max, you get maximum recruitment. The dynamic effort is with maximum velocity. But in the, in the repetition effort method, it's more like going that you're getting the max recruitment in like traditional bodybuilding ways, like with the traditional bodybuilding methods and like bodybuilding rep ranges. So on to rep ranges then. A lot of people might think a hypertrophy rep range is normally like the ten to twelve, the, the eight eight to twelve rep range somewhere around there, but that's not necessarily the case. So reps and the repetition effort method can be anywhere from five to like a hundred. You can literally like for face pulls or something, you could go as high as a hundred to hit failure. You just don't even you don't you wouldn't maybe you wouldn't even count. Um. So the repetition effort method is using mostly single joint exercises. The reason we do this is say like use a compound exercise is probably there's more chance of like technique failure technique breakdown and technique breakdown is going to be dangerous in a, in a big compound lift and it could could like be a potential uh point of injury i mean within the repetition effort you, you still do exercises like maybe rdls and good mornings but you use like much more controlled tempos and you wouldn't necessarily like do deadlift for reps or squat for reps um with the repetition effort method, you need to put the volume in the areas where you need it. There's no point in being strong in the wrong exercises, and it has to be targeted to your weak points. It, it even needs to be targeted to weak points or to create balance. So like rear delts, something like that. That's to create balance in your shoulder and prevent injury. But the majority of your repetition effort method needs to be put into your weak points. Also, it's high volume training. So you're going to use like high, high, like a high number of reps per set, high sets, short rest intervals, a high density of work. So it's very similar to like bodybuilding training. So you might, in your workout, you might do your max effort dynamic for effort first, and the rest of your workout might look like a bodybuilding workout, really. And uh, because of this, like a lot of people, me personally as well, I tend to like try and go by feel. So you maybe wouldn't necessarily have it planned out exactly what you're doing. If if you decide to change change on the day, you might have like you might have like a rough idea of what you want to do, and like what what areas you want to like put the volume into, but like on the day, if something's not feeling, you just swap it out and put something in that you do feel. So that's the thing you need to like 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 a bodybuilder would. You need to like feel the muscle working and work on that mind muscle connection, and feel the contraction so you know that you like tag in the areas you want to. So you're not just like going through the motions and doing it. You need to actually like use controlled tempos, like feel the muscle working, just like a bodybuilder would. Right then, in terms of like prescription, the amount of volume of repetition effort method, repetition effort method work you should do, there's a rule of 80-20. The 80-20 rule basically is that 80% of volume needs to be in your single joint exercises and 20% in your compounds. So your 20%, 20 of your work will be a max effort and dynamic effort work, and the rest of it will be... Uh, your repetition effort so this is where a lot of people get confused with conjugate and people might think it's like oh it's, it's just dynamic effort max it's like a low volume program no this is where the volume is that's like the tiny tiny little part of it the main the main bulk of your strength is going to be in the like developed in the repetition effort method could basically say like for example in a squat your quads might be capable of like 350 kilos, your back might be capable of 315, your glutes might be. But if your hamstrings are only capable of 300, guess how much you'll squat? 300. So there's no point banging more volume into the whole movement pattern when you're just going to be like held back by the hamstrings. So if you put the volume in a repetition effort method into the hamstrings and bring them hamstrings up to 350, a 350 capable hamstrings, what, guess what you're going to squat then? Your squat's going to go up. So by targeting the right areas in the repetition effort method, you can actually make your lifts go up more than you would by doing repetitions of, say, a squat, for example. Because after a certain point, there's going to be like certain areas and certain muscles which the, co the, the conventional lifts are not going to target, and they're going to like lag behind and hold you back. And this is the repetition effort method is where you like bring them things up 
bring everything into line, and then you can perform better at the top. But the thing is, there's always going to be the weakest part. So say you bring your hamstrings up to 350, then... So you, bring, you do that, you bring your hamstrings up to 350, then you squat 350, then you carry on, and you get your hamstrings up to 370, but then your lower back might still only be 360, then you have to bring your lower back up. So it's a constant constant um, struggle of finding your weaknesses, bringing them up, targeting them with, with, with your repetition work, and uh, eventually raising your overall performance. So then quickly to summarise, the repetition effort method is lifting a sub-maximal weight to failure to elicit maximum motor recruitment and it's very much like traditional bodybuilding work. Finally within the repetition effort method I would also like to discuss like intensity methods like you see a lot of bodybuilders using these like drop sets, supersets, giant sets that kind of thing. Um, it's a great place to use the repetition effort method you can kind of like extend your sets beyond failure and it also like is you're going by feel so if that's what you, if that's what you f like feel works do it um, there's lots of different things you can do you can do like I say drop sets I pre I'm a personal like I'm a personal fan of doing supersets of like opposing muscle groups so say you might be doing good mornings you might superset that with like an abs exercise and that in in increases your training density and also get your abs out the way instead of pushing them to the back of the workout when you're more likely to skip them um also, like rest pause can be used in the repetition effort method. I personally like doing this for rows. It's quite cool for them. But basically, you can like ex extend a set by using the rest, rest pause, pause method and say maybe you would um, do a set where you maybe only get five reps, but you maybe do four, rest of it, do another two, rest of it, do another two, and you get more reps than you would have done in the same time period. Um, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Cheers. Out.